This is the true face of ad blocking. It has nothing to do with giving consumers control. It has everything to do with lining the pockets of the for-profit ad blocking profiteers. They are the rich and self-righteous who want to tell everyone else what they can and cannot read and watch and hear. They are self-proclaimed libertarians whose liberty involves denying freedom to everyone else. The ad block profiteers are building for-profit companies whose business models are premised on impeding the movement of commercial, political, and public service communication between and among producers and consumers. Don't make any mistake about it. That's what they are into. That's what they are up to. They offer to lift their toll gates for those wealthy enough to pay them off or who submit to their demands that they constrict their freedom of speech to fit the shackles of their revenue schemes. They may attempt to dignify their practices with such politically correct phrases as reasonable advertising and responsible advertising and acceptable ads. And they can claim as loudly as they want that they seek constructive rapport with other stakeholders. But in fact, they are engaged in the techniques of the big lie, declaring themselves the friends of those whose livelihoods they would destroy and allies to those whose freedoms they would subvert. Now there are many, many intelligent, well-meaning critics of advertising. Some of them highly critical of advertising. They are in government, they are in NGOs, they are private citizens, they are in business. There are a lot of them out there. And we engage with lots of them because their aim is to advance consumers' interests through dialogue and development. The ad block profiteers are not among them. The ad block profiteers cloak themselves in a Halloween mask of consumerism as they attempt to impose private taxes on businesses and consumers alike. Their technologies indiscriminately obstruct competitive pricing data, information about product features, vital political opinions, site content, user options, public interest communications, and other intelligence necessary for the functioning of democratic capitalist societies. Surveys repeatedly show, all surveys on the subject repeatedly show that upwards of 75% of consumers prefer ad-supported internet sites where the content is otherwise free over ad-free sites where they would have to pay fees for content. Fewer than 10% of consumers want to pay for content. By driving digital publishers, including some of the most prestigious news organizations in the world, to impose fees on consumers in order to continue to support their business and content development objectives, the ad block profiteers are clearly subverting the will of consumers. So where is the good news in all this? There is good news, and actually a lot of it. Well, first, in their race to the bottom and their frenzy for investment, the ad block profiteers are much more intent on killing each other than on killing advertising. That's why they're engaged these little tiny whiny startups engage in so much op-edding around the world. They're competing for VC and angel investment. They're desperately trying to find strategic acquirers. They need to feed their business model. And by the way, they need advertising because without advertising, they don't have a business model. Many of their business models are undoubtedly illegal. Already Shine, the Israeli startup, its model of ISP level ad blocking has been cited by regulators as a probable violation of net neutrality principles. Another piece of good news. More and more publishers are initiating what IEB calls detection, notice, choice, and constraint regimes. They're installing scripts that enable them to see when consumers coming to their sites have ad blockers installed. They are providing notice to consumers about that and about how they make money, how the value exchange between consumers and publishers works, which is largely, or at least more than partially, about advertising. They're offering consumers choices, 
to turn off their ad blockers to continue to receive the content, to pay a subscription fee or a micropayment or some other choice. And then absent those choices, the publishers are constraining consumers' access to content, which reinforces the immense value of what publishers deliver. And this is working. IAB publishers implementing detection notice choice and constraint are seeing high percentages of consumers making mutually beneficial choices to maintain their access to desired content. But the best news of all is that the ad block profiteers have done this industry a favor. They have forced us to look inward at our own relentless self-involvement and outward to the men and women and children who are our actual customers. IEB Senior Vice President and Tech Lab General Manager Scott Cunningham put this best and most succinctly in an October IEB blog post, a post that's been quoted over and over again by the ad block profiteers, uh, but completely taken out of context and mischaracterized. So I'm going to quote Scott's first paragraph in its completeness. We messed up. As technologists tasked with delivering content and services to users, we lost track of the user experience. And that is true. IAB research conducted in 2014 found that one third of US web users and 41% of millennials had installed ad blocking software on one device or another. The number one reason consumers were using ad blockers was the fear that advertising could infect their computers or smartphones with viruses. But more than two-thirds of the ad-blocking consumers also said they believed that advertising slowed down their access to the internet. And they were right. As the New York Times reported recently, the worst ads load so slowly that they use up data plans and sap battery life. Now, why did we lose track of user experience? I think it's a good question and deserves a fair amount of soul searching. For much of the past decade, the digital ad industry, aided and abetted by venture capitalists with no long-term stake in the viability of the media and marketing businesses, have been on a headlong rush to subvert industry standards, hoping that they individually can own the single business model that can lock in proprietary advantage and lock out competitors in the $600 billion global ad industry. The result has been breathtaking innovation, but it's also been suffocating chaos. Multitudes of would-be formats and wannabe standards crowd screens, interrupting consumers' activities while impeding the delivery of desired content. They can create supply chain vulnerabilities, generate privacy concerns, and drive fears about data security. Ad blocking, in many ways, has been a consumer ple plebiscite. As former Mozilla executive Darren Herman noted at the IEB Ad Operations Summit a few months back, the software offered consumers an opportunity to vote. And they voted no on chaos, opacity, and slowness. Now, fortunately, there is a way out of this conundrum. It requires the industry, this industry, you in this room and our colleagues out there, those who couldn't make it, those who are listening from afar, it requires us all to embrace the founding rationale of the IEB that was articulated 20 years ago by our forefathers and foremothers. We must create significant new operating standards consumer-friendly rules of the road that regulate, that self-regulate how we will operate our sites, our advertising, and our delivery. And we must develop technical standards that will realize these guidelines effectively and efficiently. This will not be easy. Unlike every other major medium, the internet is a collectively owned and managed enterprise. Whereas a broadcast television network controls pretty rigidly and maintains rigorous standards for everything a consumer sees on that television channel, an internet page is a cobbled together assembly of parts managed by perhaps dozens of independent businesses, each one contracted individually by the publisher, by agencies, by marketers, and others. 
Some of these entities supervise the content you see. Some administer and analyze the invisible data that governs, measures, and optimizes how and to whom the content is delivered. This decentralized cauldron of innovation requires a new set of guiding principles. This is why the IEB and the IEB Tech Lab developed the LEAN principles. LEAN stands for advertising and ad operations that are light, encrypted, ad choices supporting, and non-invasive. We believe LEAN will be as important to the future of the digital advertising industry as the first IEB universal ad package was to the industry's creation. Scott Cunningham will talk much more about lean this afternoon in the town halls and on this stage tomorrow. But please know this now from me. We intend to make lean the foundation of IEB's activities for the foreseeable future. And among our very first goals is introducing a public lean scoring system by which all publishers, all advertisers, and all agencies will be able to measure their activities against rational, reasonable, and consumer-friendly performance benchmarks. Lean is the basis for a sustainable advertising ecosystem. We firmly believe that a combination of lean advertising and media and publisher implementation of detection, notice, choice, and constraint will limit the impact of ad blocking. But more importantly, we believe that an embrace of lean principles will bring this industry back to the rational center. Focused on making money, yes, sure, but cognizant also that successful businesses require long-term attention to and concern for human beings themselves, the users. Remember that those users represent all races and creeds and that their happiness and success translates into your happiness and success too.